never used it. I simply forward declared it, and then I defined it below. That is, I assigned a value to it, so now it has a function attached to it. And then as long as it's defined prior to the first call, I can refer to it in any function that has visibility to that, fun to that um, variable. So will enter is defined on line 101. And because I declared the variable on line 29, this variable, even though it has nothing in it yet, is visible to the function below. So just to step through this in case it was confusing, I declare it on line one, uh, 29, and then on line 101, I started to use or define a function which refers to it. So the body of this function gets built up, but right here where I called create arm segment, it doesn't have anything yet. So that's a placeholder. It says, okay, hasn't been defined yet, but I, I have a placeholder for it. So it holds on to it. And then I finally define it. And then later on in this code, when this bit executes, it says, okay, I had a placeholder. Ah, oh, look, now there's something there. I can call the function and everything's good to go. So in a nutshell, forward declaration gives me a little bit of uh, flexibility with how I organize my code. So I don't have to, if you get into, say, a chicken and an egg situation where a function A needs to call function B and function B needs to call function A, I know, that sounds a little bit weird, or say ABC, you can just forward declare them and then define them and then run them and everything should be fine. And, and then for anybody who's new to that concept, I mean, really defining everything at the top is just a housekeeping item, right? Mm -hmm. It is. This is, a, this is one of the ways that I do maintain my code organization. This is how I do my housekeeping. It's worth noting that Sergey made a wonderful suggestion when we talked about forward declarations some time ago. Because this is a composer scene, we've created a composer scene object. And this scene object, by default, has a number of methods already associated with functions. A method is nothing more than a function associated with an object. So we could say functions. It has a create function. It has a destroy function, which you are supposed to fill in the body, but it knows that it's going to exist. But what he said was, instead of forward declaring things, I could simply have said scene dot, let's say, uh, can't type, why don't I do it with the create arm segment? So create arm segment, instead of having forward declared it, I could have said scene dot create arm segment and et cetera, just like I did before. And now, wherever I called it, I could have said scene.createArmSegment. But because scene, which was created at the top, has basically global visibility within the file, not to be confused with global everywhere, but file level visibility, I could simply have attached the function to my scene and then called it everywhere within the scene. And that's a nice way to organize, too. So I didn't need to forward declare the variable. So I still haven't switched over to using that because I'm sort of stuck in a rut, in a sense. I'm used to doing it my way. But this is another nice way to do it, is simply attach all the functions to your scene, and then they're visible to that scene anywhere that scene operates, be it within the file or called externally. It's also a nice way to avoid uh, bumping up against Lua's uh, local limit, which I can't remember. Is it 64? It's 200. Yeah, you're right. Oh, 200. There's, okay. There's a limit to 200 local variables defined within any scope at any time. And so if you have 100 local variables, file level, and you try to create 101 local levels in a function, the last one's not going to be there. It's going to, you're going to run into the limit and your app will crash. So, what did I say? We're not going to get distracted with side topics, and I'm going on side topics. <laughs> nah, that was my bad. Sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to lead people through the, or, the organization, but let's just go ahead and skip through here. If you're familiar with Composer, you're going to know that there's a create function. Now, the create function in all of these examples does nothing more than create a layer system. That is uh, three display groups, 
which are layered on top of each other, where underlay is on the bottom, content is in the middle, and overlay is on top of all that. Uh, it creates a background image, which is this image with the squares that you see here and the red. And this is my traditional background image so that I can see uh, how much overlap I've got in this particular display. For example, the application was designed to a resolution of 320 by 480, very old school iPhone 4 resolution. And my graphic image is designed to show me that this extra space here between the red and the side is, well, it's extra. It's, it's unused width. Or if I had done, say, an iPad, it would be a little bit taller and there would be a black gap at the top and the bottom. It's just, it's just a point of reference for me when I'm doing my design. In other words, the guaranteed visible space is in the red block here, and everything outside is not guaranteed to be visible on all devices. Do you do that in all your apps? I do that generally in all of my apps. Um, so that I know that if I have something that has to be fixed at a certain position within the design space, if I place it outside of this rectangle, then it's not going to be visible on all devices. Gotcha. Now, mostly, for example, see how this button here is adjusted to go all the way to the right? Mm -hmm. I simply place certain objects by the absolute width or height of the screen, which I've done in this case. So if I were to resize this and view it as, say, a borderless iPad and then run the draggable thing, the buttons would be in a different place relative to this rectangle, but still in the same exact position relative to the side of the screen. So I placed this button and this button at the bottom relative to the side of the screen. Again, I use this background as purely um, a reminder of my guaranteed visible space, and so if I'm viewing this as uh, sorry, wrong one, as the as an iPhone 4 style resolution, even though it was actually the uh, the new yeah iPhone 4 resolution, you can see now that this is my guaranteed visible space, which is the same as my config Lua settings, 320 by 480, which comes up to 640 by 960. Okay, so. Uh, Create the, the background, that's this bit here, and a label to tell us what the example is, draggable ragdoll, as you can see at the top. Obviously, this is going to change for the different ones, posable ragdoll, and some buttons. And the buttons, in this case, are the back button. All of the scenes will have it, which just takes us back to the main menu. And then various different examples will have other buttons, usually in the upper right corner. In this case, gravity, hybrid mode, strength of the drag or touch um, joint. But in the case that we're looking at today, just a gravity button. And clicking it will toggle gravity. And then our ragdoll should fall down. Um, other than that, the create function doesn't do anything, and the reason is is because I'm going to be coming in and out, and so I will create the content anew every time you enter the scene, and every time we have finished exiting it, I destroy all of the content, so the next time we come back in and I draw it again, there's nothing getting overdrawn. It's just a nice way for these examples to allow us to run the example, move things around, throw George off the screen. Sorry if anybody out there listening who's their name is George. I apologize. Uh, and then we can run it again and George is back. So, <laughs> sorry. Poor George. Mm-hmm. I merely chose a name. Of the, nobody is named George on the show, so we're good. All right. Uh, Sergey's not on the show, and then I threw Sergey off the screen. Of course, Sergey's going to come back and get me. <laughs> okay, so where's the guts of this? The guts of this example. Start on line 101. In the will enter method or function, uh, will enter is my own custom function. Traditionally in Composer, there is a function called show. 
I split it into two different parts. Uh, I look for the will phase, and I call my customer.